Okay, to begin with, we're going to click the Windows button and we're going to go to Excel 2013. Then I'm going to click the blank workbook template. And this is the window, our work area for Excel. Okay. Some quick things to note that were similar to Word. You got the quick access toolbar up at the top. And if you want to add or get rid of any of those options, you just click on the down arrow there. Um, you still have all the same tabs, including file. Um, the ribbon, the home ribbon, looks pretty similar. There's some different ones here. Uh, that you will learn how to use. Um, a part of the screen that's useful is uh, the formula bar. So when you point, and by the way, all parts of the screen have labels. So when you point at it, it'll tell you what it is. This is the formula bar. This is the insert function button, enter and cancel for anything that you do in the formula bar. Um, this is the name box. And if you need to go to a cell like two seven or G217, you could type that in here. <clears throat> okay, um, G217, and it'll take you to G7, to G17. Also, Control Home will take you to A1, okay, which will be my next thing. Uh, spreadsheet work areas made up of columns that are lettered and rows that are numbered. Um, Let's right now go to, and by, this is your worksheet area, You um, re, where this only has one sheet, sheet one, but you can add the sheets. Um, here are your scroll bars and your different views. Right now we're in normal view. Um, this is page layout view, I think. Yep, page layout and pre, page break preview. Okay, so if your ever, screen ever looks funky when you come in, just always go to normal, and then you have the zoom. So we're going to go to file right now. And we're going to open a file for the Excel unit. Um, make sure you're connected to your OneDrive. Um, I am going to go to my OneDrive. And Advanced Apps. <clears throat> we are in the Excel unit, Section 1. And I am going to open WB Weekly Sales. Okay, and once this opens, you're going to see that this workbook contains one worksheet with sales for the Waterfront Bistro for the week ended September 21st, 2015. The formulas to sum the sales have already been created. Notice some of the cells in the column labeled Saturday are empty. You will enter these values in steps 12 through 15. So I'm going to point a few things out to you. Again, we just have sheet one sheet here. Um, and it isn't named. Okay, they talked about formulas being entered. Look up here in the formula bar. See, it just looks like all these cells have just numbers in them. But if you look at the formula bar, you can see, yes, this number does have a number. If I hit the down arrow, that number has a number. That cell has a number. So does this one. But this one has a form, or actually a function, that is adding from starting with B4 all the way to B6. This is cell B4 all the way to B6. It's adding these numbers. Okay, um, and then we have total sales, which adding again, we don't use sum this time. Instead, we put cell addresses because they're not consecutive. They're not adjacent to each other. So there's B7, B11, and B15 that are being added to find total sales. And then um, gross profit is 30%. So then we come down here, and here um, is the formula for that. Okay, now I want to point something out to you here. Okay, we use cell addresses and not numbers because, um, let's say in, in, in this formula here, let's say I change my sales for Sunday to 3,000. Watch what happens. Be everything changes. Did you see all the numbers change? That's because we referenced the cell before not the number 2585 okay um, so down here this is what's happening here 
we are telling it, and by the way, all formulas start and functions start with an equal sign. We're telling it to go to B17, look at the, con the value in B17, which is this number, multiply it by the number in B19. Okay, well, why are the dollar signs in front of the B and the 19? Um, that's cause, because it's called an absolute cell reference. And what's meant by that is um, if I copy this formula over, which is what they already did, you're going to see that up here B19 stays the same, but the other cell changes, which is what we want for this formula. We always want it to refer back to this cell. Okay, click the File tab, Save As. And I'm going to save it. Use the save option to save a file for the first time. Um, at the Save As dialog box with Excel, as one is the active folder. I'm going to make this my active folder. Press the Home key. Okay, so Home. And then ES1 hyphen. Then I don't have to type the whole thing. Okay and then save. Um, move the cell pointer over the intersection of column H with row 6, cell H6 is where we're going to go. <clears throat> H6 Okay, I could have also typed it in my name box over there. Um, and then click to make it the active cell. By the way, the active cell is always the one with a border around it like this and then the handle in the lower right corner. Um, I'm going to type in, it wants me to type in 3157. And enter. Okay, and notice that the entry in cell H7 has changed. This is because the formula created in H7 was dependent on cell H6. As soon as you enter a value in H6, any other dependent cells are automatically updated. Okay. Um, click cell H10 to make it the active cell. And type 214. Then H14, 774. Um, hit enter. Look at the entry in B19. This percentage is used to calculate the estimated gross profit in row 20. Total sales times the gross profit factor. Uh, click cell B19 to make it the active cell. Okay. And type 32. And enter. And notice how all these numbers changed. Um, it automatically inserts the percent sign uh, when you type 32. Notice the new estimated growth values. Okay, click the Save button in the Quick Access Toolbar. Uh, mine's not showing, so I'm going to click it to add it. Oh, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Sorry. Okay, so I'll click it to save. Um, and then File, Print. And then in the print area, you can see it's all on one page. And so if we were going to print, we could do this um, to HP Office Step Pro 8600 Network. Not the facts, though. Um, but we're not going to actually print these practice exercises. So um, that's it for Activity 1-1.